Okay, welcome back to another episode of DFS Fantasy NASCAR Picks. I'm your host, Megaro31. I've been playing with the audio, so uh, please let me know if it's better here. Um, different mic, new position, graphic equalizer. Hopefully it comes out better. But if not, um, like I said, in the last couple of videos here, we keep on trying this, but you can always put it on 2x if my voice is too low. It'll be a little bit higher there, and you can always put on the captions too. So, uh this is, I apologize for no Xfinity video yesterday. There was a tight window. I came to try to crunch the numbers to bang out even like a quick short. My computer um, just absolutely crashed, blue screen of death. Um, but I got everything back up and running, so we're good to go for this one. So uh, three rules if you haven't watched these videos before for what's a super speedway race at Daytona. The first rule is play light because it's a high variant sport, and this makes it even more high variant. A lot of goofy people win. A lot of goofy things happen in these races. So they're very unpredictable. It's almost like a scratch-off lottery ticket. Second thing is you generally want to stack the back of the field, like anywhere from 20th on down, because place differential is what you want to chase here. There's no dominators on the board here because there are no dominators. It's two and a half miles. It's not that many um, laps to it and you really don't have dominator points lead changes really fast fast laps are spread out nobody really captures line share and if they do it's a rare rare thing and um then I mean, you don't want to try to chase that so place differential is what you want to look for the other thing too is don't be afraid to leave a lot of salary on the table 10k is fine don't Freak out that you need to get the stud drivers and stuff. They usually start closer to the front. They usually have a better chance of wrecking and losing place differential, getting a negative. As you saw, um, Austin Hill was pretty popular yesterday. He's had to start in the back with an issue, wrecked early, and wrecked a lot of people's lines and days. So don't go with that. So play light, stack the back, leave sail around the table. Those are your rules. You'll see a lot of colors here. The other thing in these races, we didn't see much in Xfinity, but you should see it more so in um, the cup race, is manufacturers and, and teams work together. So the manufacturers are color-coded there between Ford, Toyota, and Chevy. And then the teams are color-coded. And I know you're looking at it, it's like, wow, there's a lot of yellow, but they're not on the same, same team. So... With the Chevys, the one that's more of a cream color run with Hendrick engines. The um, ones that are like a brighter yellow are ECR engines. So not necessarily that they're all going to work together. And it gets a little bit muddy with the Ford, with the Fords, with like Penske usually works together. Stuart Haas works together. Sometimes they cross work together. And then you have like the front row and RFK cars and the Rick Ware cars usually stay towards the back. But who knows, without the BJ McLeod cars and the Rick Ware cars in there, there's less garbage cars in here to be back markers that stay off the pace. Some drivers love to get up there and be aggressive, like Ricky Stenthouse. Like, he's starting 35th, but he can work his way to the front. People will let him because some people don't care. They're going to stay in the back, try to avoid wrecks, um, and then go for it at the end, unless they need stage points. We still, it is getting close to the playoffs. I didn't really throw that up here just because again it's a volatile race and i don't think it's really going to make a difference on who you play and and who you don't in my opinion some other people might have other opinions on that but the next couple of weeks when we do the videos where we really focus in on who's like trying to get to the playoffs there because i don't think it's going to really um if somebody's going to be conservative they're going to be conservative if somebody's going to be aggressive they're going to be aggressive i think it's just more of their nature here than actually strategy for the playoffs and it doesn't really matter, again, for like, you know, sometimes playoff drivers have to stay out there to get stage points. You can so easily, uh, Riley Herbst yesterday got in a wreck with Cole Custer on pit road and was able to start in the back after multiple times going into the pit, getting repairs, getting back out there so he didn't lose lead laps. And he was back up in the top 10 in a matter of no time because if you're being overly aggressive and you can get in the draft and get up towards the front in the beginning of the race, in the middle of the race, even in the beginning of the third stage, people are going to probably let you do it. And you can find an equally um, aggressive partner to probably help go with you. And people aren't going to really care or try to jockey for position much until the end of the race. 
sometimes you're just going to let the people that want to be aggressive go out there and fight it out and do whatever they want to, but they're just going to hang back and wait for, you know, 10 to go, 7 to go, whenever things start to line up and make their run at that point. So Michael McDowell gives a poll. He's won here at uh, Super Speedways before. Uh, usually pretty good, even though Ford just kind of turned their back on him. I think you can have a good day. Maybe somebody they consider on FanDuel, but do not play on DK. Same thing with Todd Gillen. Has had some success on super speedways here. But these are very dangerous plays to play up here. So they're going to be fades. Joey Logano, I'm going to put my 100K line. Because Penske team likes to work together, get together. And if the Fords are good here, now there's no practice. So nobody knows. And they don't have practice because they don't want to tear up a bunch of cars on a super speedway. And it's pretty simple. Like, you don't really need, like, handling and stuff. You just keep it open. Um, yeah, so you get tight and loose, they can make different adjustments and stuff through the pits, but it's not like you need the adjustments that you need on a road course or some other tracks. So, uh, Joey Logano, I like him, he usually uh likes to be up front there with his Hendricks team or his Hendricks, his Penske teammates. So, I'm going to put them all in my 100k lineup, I'm going to stack them. I'll probably play more Fords with them also. People are not going to play him. They're going to have low ownership. Maybe Blaney, because Blaney has had some success here. But nobody's going to play anybody up in the top 10. So that way, that's where I'm going to shoot the moon here and hope that the Ford stay clean. Uh, Cindric's won here before, and, and Blaney has done well on super speedways, that they all work together, that they are able to stay clean, that Ford has a better pit strategy. Because sometimes you'll see them... And we've seen it, we see it more in like the 125s for Daytona, but there's been times where each manufacturer tries to do something in one pits first and one pits second. And sometimes one of, if the one that pits second can get more momentum and get out and stay in line, they can catch the ones that pitted first or they can put down like more of a lead. It It's just, we've seen sometimes like teams go out there and in two separate strategies one of the strategies was better so i'm just for the 100k gonna bank it on being ford and being penske and that's where i'm gambling on that so priest barry and briscoe i would say are gonna be all fades um but again if you're playing stack then stack all the Stuart haas teams this one's very dangerous in dk because it's so close to the front probably better on fandle but um it, it's more like a stack or fade thing Byron has been decent on these. He likes to get up there and lead and stuff. Uh, GPP for me. Cindric already explained, even though he's had a terrible season, he has been good on um, super speedways. And I think if they work together as Penske cars, that that could be a very beneficial. Larson and Elliot, same thing. I'd probably stack with Byron if I'm doing it here. I like Elliot kind of as a one-off. Uh, he has done really well on super speedways. So... I can uh, see him maybe, uh, and he's like right on the fringe of the top ten. If I if I was playing a little less aggressive GPP, I'd like start with Elliot, and then I just go down and um, start taking some of those like cash plays to to fill in, and he'd be like my shot to win. So, and that's another strategy you can do. Just figure out who your winner is going to be up here, and then take people that are down for the place differential, and um, and that could pay off also. As especially really um good on FanDuel where you get the the finishing position is is a little bit more key sometimes in place to throw. Kyle Bush, um, could this be the race he wins? Yes. Could he be the first car out? Of course. So uh GPP as usual. Kozlowski and Bush are like starting a little bit too close to the front. I do like them. Don't know it would be super risky to pair the these forts with the hundred K ones. Um you know, I would probably hope in my 100K lineup, I'd throw in like Cody Ware and like Haley that are down towards the bottom, hoping that all the Fords work together and that they're kind of like the lowest ones on, in the packing order of the Fords, but still get a good finish, which still gives you place differential. Plus, if the stack works out, then like everything will be clicking. So it's it's more of a narrative that I'm I'm building here than like usually we take individual drivers based on how I think they're going to perform. So this is definitely the sum of the whole is greater than the parts um, theory. But the RFK cards, I, I, Kozlowski doesn't mind getting up there and leading. Uh, Busher, I, I think somewhere in the middle. He'll work with the Fords if there's an opportunity, or he can be cautious if, if he needs to. 
Gregson has always been aggressive. He'll probably try to get up with the forwards and, and step front. So I think he he's a, a little bit of a safer GPP play starting um, 15th here. Austin Dillon, we all saw that he won. They took it away from him. Uh, that's not my opinion on it. I think Hamlin was fair game, but turning um, the uh, – no, I think Logano was fair game, but turning Hamlin was uncalled for, so that's why he got the penalty and it was upheld. So, could he win this? Has he won this? Yes, uh, GPP. Uh, kind of, you know, stick it to NASCAR. Like, hey, you know what? Go ahead, penalize us. We're gonna get in anyways. Um, okay, possible. I don't think it's likely, but I will have some shares of Dylan just in case. Next, you have a nice Toyota stack here, which I think is a great um, place to start with GPP um, Truex. Bubba and Hamlin. Bubba's won Talladega. I think it was rain shortened, but still, like he was up there and put himself in to, to win. Uh, Hamlin has won a ton of Daytona races, like you know, not in the next gen car, but before the next gen car, he had quite a streak at super speedways. And Truex has been solid. Um, I think he said he had some issues, but I think, you know, if he stays with the team and his teammates and Toyota is the dominant manufacturer, they should be fine. So, uh, if I had to rank him here, Hamlin's definitely by far my favorite of him as cash just because of his past pedigree here. Bubba would be second and then Truex, but this is a nice place to start a stock for a GPP. Harrison Burton, I'm going to throw in his GPP. Probably should be a fade starting this far forward because he's absolutely terrible. And even if the Fords are doing good, he might get loose and wreck himself or take out others with him. He's just such a liability. Um, but just with the nature of the racing, just because I think, again, it's just some of the, the whole, not the part that his and he uh, has an alliance with Penske that he can get sucked in with them. And he was actually leading the race um in Michigan at one point after the Larson crash. I I was at work on Monday when the race resumed and I tuned in. I'm like, what the heck? What happened with this type of time? It was like opposite day. And I thought it was just like, okay, they did they stayed out. They haven't cycled through pitch yet. But then these like back markers kept on being up front. I was like, wow. That's crazy. And uh, the race was kind of upside down with the results. And you're probably going to see the same here for Daytona. So um, Harrison Burton going to win this one? Probably not. I do, you know, on those like high, high odds, throw like a buck on some of them just in case because you win like a couple hundred dollars just if you put a dollar and, and they win. So maybe you lose $10, but you might get a couple hundred if you um, – if one of them do win. So again, scratch off lottery ticket. Same thing. You go to the instant lottery machine, you put in $10, you might win nothing. You might win a couple hundred. Same principle here. Uh, Alex Bowman, I think, is a cash play. He's been very conservative and and um, does well, usually keeping his car. Has a really high um, finishing uh, percentage at a super speedway, so I like him there. Suarez and Hill, I think, are both GPPs. They're both Chevys, so they'll be somewhere in the mix working together. Childress um, track house, I believe and a colleague. So uh, I think, I mean, Hill has, has been masterful in Xfinity um, other than getting caught up in somebody else's nonsense early in the race. Uh, guys not knowing how to drive on a super speedway and Hill is just in the back and got collected. Uh, wasn't his fault by any means, uh, you know, but I think he could probably be a, a factor because he does drive and it's a Richard Childers car. So, and he did pretty well in the beard car here also. So uh, I think there's some upside there in the GPP and um, Suarez also. Uh, Ross Chastain with his aggressiveness, I think you can make him a cash play starting 24th is Jason. I think I'll have high ownership. Tyler Reddick, I'm going to make my first prime play here. Like I said, I, I usually like the Toyotas here and I'm going with a Toyota stack in the back, which is going to be Reddick, Bell and uh, Eric Jones. And if you want to mix other Toyotas in or other manufacturers, that's perfectly fine. And, you know, I'm probably starting my times too high, some would say, but like, this is where I found success. It's like, I know these cars, I know these drivers. Reddick is um, it's good at uh, super speedways. So is uh, Bell. You have Gibbs there in the middle. I bet Gibbs, I did actually a parlay that um, Sheldon Creed and Gibbs would win, but I bet each one outright too. So, uh, this could be a sneaky place where Gibbs picks up his first win because you have a lot, even though Denny Hamlin lost a lot of points, he got a penalty from Toyota racing. It wasn't his fault. Um, that's going to knock him down, but he does have enough to qualify in the playoffs. He's just not going to like, yes, definitely another win would help him. But I think with the stable, like, you know, Reddick has a win and I believe Bell has a win and uh, I don't think Bubba has a win, but I could see 
like one of these um cars in the Toyota, the, the top six Toyota. So I'm talking about the Gibbs and the 2311. I'm not talking about the legacy cars that they try to push one of them to win the Sakai and to kind of lock them into the playoffs. So I I don't know how where Gibbs is in the playoff picture, but I think the just um trying to play a narrative here that the Toyotas are going to have a strong um run today so there are going to be more of my cash that i went with the ford as my secondary one that's why i'm doing as the 100k gvp and i think that gibbs might uh, get out there and get um so if you're asking me who i think is gonna win this race I, god only knows but i'm putting some money on gibbs just trying to read the tea leaves that they're going to try to manufacture win for toyota and joe gibbs racing to help um solidify more playoff points for that team or playoff position or entries for that team so uh i really like this range here with um, reddick gibbs and bell but i'm going with the priority of reddick and bell i don't know if i'll play gibbs in cash uh, so hemrick is uh always been good on super speedways and xfinity and um and it's been decent in uh in his colleague program Parker retzloff uh he is masterful at super speedways he got in a wreck last night but again it wasn't his fault um but early in the season and the Daytona and then I first the first Talladega race, I think he had like top tens or even top fives. Uh, his run really, or maybe it was last year. I can't remember if this is rookie or not. It's been such a long season, but anyways, has had success. So I'm putting him in his GPP because I want to see in this, he had one cup start and it was terrible. That, but that was, that was a D that was a terrible car. The 66, Horrible equipment, um, was so slow. I don't know if it was him or the equipment and the team. They just needed somebody to run, and I think that that was just to give him experience in the car to get ready to race in this beard. Only specializes on super speedways. They've had really good cars for Austin Hill and uh, Noah Gregson and, and some others. So I think Retzloff comes in here, and we will see today if he is talented on super speedways or if it's the Jordan Anderson program that manufactures success for him on it. So this is going to be a telltale day. That's why he's a GPP, um, borderline cash play. Zane Smith and Nemechek uh, cash plays. Again, they're starting close to the back and have some upside, especially if uh, Nemechek a little bit more, if he's going to be with the Toyotas, which I think will be strong and be out there leading. Shane Van Gisberg showed a great restraint. I did end up in accident eventually, but there was a couple of them where he was watching and was able to break to let a spinning car um, slide in front of him and not get caught up in stuff. So I think he'll... Um, be pretty successful here and, and colleague is a decent program but it's more of a gpp than cash for me cody Ware, i think it's pulled up by the other fords so he's a cash and uh, place differential lajoy has been decent on these um he ran well at, at atlanta where um they uh repaved it, it was almost like a super speedway and almost um won that one so i think he's gonna be highly owned in a cash play i think stenhouse can be chalk he's won at daytona before too he's aggressive likes to get up towards the front so i, I couldn't put him as a prime play just because sometimes he's overly aggressive he's been better this year he's been a, a more mature version of himself and um it hasn't led to a ton of success but i think that he'll be um a decent play there Haley also Haley was very good in Xfinity and has shown good um things in Cup, and I think he gets pulled up by the rest of the Fords too here uh to work with him to help him out here even though it's a Rick Wild car or they're gonna stay in the back and uh, not get into any trouble and should be survived based on attrition so either way it works I think it, it benefits Haley most of our with Spire should be um get some decent place differential BJ McCall and Joey Gase, I just kind of question if these cars can make it the 500 laps. Well, not 500, the 500 miles. I don't know, maybe it's 400. Anyways, I don't know if they can make it the whole duration of the race. So I'm just kind of skeptical on them. So that's why they're GPP. And Eric Jones is lock button of all lock buttons. It's a decent car. Somebody has been good on super speedways in a Toyota car that's probably going to get a lot of help from friends with the manufacturer. And there's no place to go but up here. So, I mean, and potentially if cars get sent to the back, his place already moves up a, a, a few. And if there's like a wreck behind him early on, like there was, and he's not involved in it, then that just gives him the floor of all floors. So you got to kind of 
play Eric Jones and like probably 75% of your lineups, he is the safest driver. Even if he crashes, he loses you nothing, but a lot of these drivers will lose you a lot if they crash early and um, lose place differential because they're not going to be making it up in fast laps and um, lead laps and things like that. So, so I got four favorite questions. You can put them in the chat below. Hit me up at mega 31 on Twitter slash X. Uh, or just join the FSI Discord, and you can be in there too to um, DM me and ask questions, like some people did yesterday when there was no Xfinity video. They said, "Hey, can you help me out?" And you know, I was even though we're selling a product here and trying to keep the lights on and 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 stuff and running a business. If I can't get a video out and you're struggling with a contest, I will try to reach out and help you. So I gotta take the paying subs a priority, but after that, if they're it's still time, which there usually is. I do not mind answering some questions and trying to help you out with some of those things. So uh, that's what I got. Um, so description of the video, you can go into where our website is and there should be a link to join our Discord there. Um, you don't have to sign up for a package, but check them out. Uh, a lot of sports going on today. It's only six bucks. You'll get soccer. You'll get, um, you know, get Major League Baseball, NFL preseason. Uh, we will be covering college football, but we've determined there's only a three game garbage slate today. So we're probably not going to be doing a ton with that. We do, um, you know, we'll, we'll see where we get on that one, but uh, PGA showdown, WNBA, so many things going on. It's only $6 a day. It's um, $25 a week. Very, very inexpensive. Um, so, uh, that's what I got for you. If these videos help, help us back, like, subscribe to your channel, and share with your friends. I will see you next weekend. Uh, all three series should be back. I'll probably try to have speculation videos for um, truck and Xfinity if we don't have um, practice and qualifying before that, unless it's a very small lock. But always check our channel for shorts because sometimes they'll bang them out. And I also explain to you that if you do want help and there is no video, then um, hit me up on Twitter X or in Discord. So um, at MegaRuler31. So thanks for watching. Good luck in your contest. Hope you have an amazing weekend. I'll see you next time.